Welcome, friends, to uh, part two of uh, number 16, OBE Journal 2023. Um, hopefully you've seen part one. And uh, this uh, basically a continuation done about 15 minutes later. So um, I did talk with, or shall we say, telepathically interact with former Senator Harry Reid uh, some months ago and um, I'm sure a few folk were surprised at that but um, he did want to uh, comment as he does now on the ongoing UAP situation as he was involved behind the scenes for, I would say, many years, trying to bring that hidden information to light. It was known in the UFO community, which I'm a very small part of, and um, it was just known that he was interested in it, and I, I didn't know what he was up to, but I'm sure he was using his... Um, long experience in the corridors of power to um, encourage and or pressure certain people to fess up. Um, and now he would like to communicate. Thank you, Mr. Reed. I hope you, I didn't keep you waiting. And he's saying, oh, there's no waiting here, Gordon. And... Um, uh, he would like to, and tell me if I'm getting this a little wrong, Mr. Reed, but I, my impression is you would like to encourage all those, uh, and specifically uh, Representative Burchett and the others on his uh, team, and the whistleblowers like David Grush, and the uh, podcasters like Jeremy Corbell. And um, he's particularly pleased with the uh, broadcast outfit called News Nation for pursuing this relentlessly. He's very pleased. And he wants you all to know from where he is in the afterlife, he can tune in to this. He says it takes a bit of guidance and a bit of effort. Um, but I've been here long enough and I've been instructed carefully and I can do it. Okay, so far so good. So um, he wants to encourage all those folks, those fine folks, as he just said to me, um, uh, to continue with their efforts and not get disheartened. He knows the Pentagon and Defense Department types and probably agency types that are putting up huge resistance to this. They have their reasons, some of which are selfish, others of which are involved being front men for even greater forces behind them who do not want this information to be released. Um, as Stephen Greer has relentlessly pointed out, it's not the so much the magical nature of spaceships coming from the other side of the galaxy to visit us. It's the energy system, the lack of fuel that gets them here. And uh, if that can be applied, as Stephen Greer insists, to cars, to, well, let's, let's call them personal mobility vehicles, and um, also, uh, you know, all forms of transportation, and the heating and cooling of homes. 
this zero point energy magic. Uh, many problems to do with global warming and climate change and the destruction of the environment will be on the road to being solved. But those who guard these secrets jealously wish to keep the uh, wealth they have accumulated and the power that they love. And a number of these uh, folks, Defense Department, Pentagon Agency, they're sharing in the wealth, but they're not the front men. Well, I mean, I'm saying they are the front men. There are even more powerful people behind them. Harry Reid knows all of this. He knew it when he was physically alive, and it's even more apparent now. So, uh, again, encouragement. He tells me he can see the future, as many folks in the spirit world can. Not all of the future, and not with 100% accuracy. He tells me it's more like seeing probabilities, how things could work out if certain energies were applied. And I think by energies, he's not thinking of spaceship mobility, but human willpower, human determination, human, what's he saying? Heartfelt compassion for the sufferings of others. That's what he's saying. So he can see this conflict, if you like, the ones we're seeing, where, you know, Mr. Burchett references uh, meetings where they're being stonewalled, as he has done several times recently. Um, he sees that being resolved with patience and determination. And he wants those involved to know this. <laughs> and even as I have pointed out, what chance is there that I can get through to them? Just uh, this uh, quiet psychic living near Toronto in Canada. I've got no connections of that kind. But, you know, we'll put the thought out there and let it float around the world via the internet. So, if any of you see this, catching on to the name Senator Harry Reid, um, and going, I wonder who this guy is and what he's talking about. Um, that's the purpose, because, you know, I've got no, none of those connections. I'm... Uh, I, extremely small player in the uh, UFO community. I'm not even a player. I'm just an interested party. And, um, I mean, I can't phone up Stephen Greer and say, hey, Steve, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, and I certainly can't uh, phone up uh, Representative uh, Burchett, much as I admire his uh, attitude and sense of humor. Um, so this is the purpose of this. And this is what Harry Reid would like to see, even if it's only the remotest chance of it happening. He says, let's pursue this avenue and see where it leads. And I'm sure he's pursuing any other avenue he can think of. And um, there's, there are plenty of people doing channeling. Um on either in or in books or on the internet or on podcasts. There's no lack of that. But they're not really doing quite what I'm doing. But uh, maybe they are. You know, it's it's hard to uh, get uh, wide distribution, even though anyone anywhere in the world with a computer can look at my YouTube uh, uh, contacts and interactions. So, um, I take it, uh, Senator uh, Reid, you are having a whale of a time in the afterlife, as most folk do.
He's uh, grinning and chuckling at that. Of course I am. As you well know, Gordon. And uh, I'm saying, well, Senator, I'd just like to confirm that for any potential audience. Um, I'm well aware of uh, the uh, joyousness and uh, mm, pleasurable creativity available in the afterlife to those who adjust themselves and give up their earthly attachments to whatever status, power, image, whatever. And um, I suspect you have done that. Else you wouldn't be so uh, at ease with your uh, small agenda here. And I certainly appreciate you uh, contacting me to uh, help spread the message. I'm uh, honored. Thank you, sir. Your uh, work on behalf of this project is uh, perhaps not well known, but it is known. And your name will not be forgotten. So, again, he's emphasizing, spread the word. Give encouragement to any of these players. Uh, keep that up. Keep the pressure up. Keep pushing ahead. Keep feeling positive and thinking constructive. The dam will burst. And it will burst because the pressure of your desires will overcome the hurdles, the obstacles. He said he had, he is reminding me, he has got plenty memories of such things, such events occurring in his years in government, uh, you know, using that metaphor of uh, the pressure of determination and willpower. And he wants to quickly add, the pressure of determination and willpower expressed within the paradigm of democracy. We're not talking about force here. We're not talking about arm twisting or guns at heads. This is about democracy. This is about discussion. This is about the clash of viewpoints. I get it, Mr. Reed. I get it. And I applaud your contribution. Thank you, sir. And off he goes. Well, I think there are other voices that wish to speak, but I'm not getting them right now. Oh dear, I think uh, Mary Pinchot Meyer from part one has uh, given the nod to Timothy Leary. He's uh, off in the court. Well, I say the corner, I don't mean the corner of the room. I mean sort of the corner of my consciousness. And he's, uh, oh, he's vibrating. And he's grinning, that classic leery grin. And he's changing size and shape. Take that image of leery in midlife. Mid-50s, I would say. The one images that we're well familiar with, and uh, imagine it um, expanding and contracting, and uh, changing shape in odd ways, rather like a cartoon character might change shape at the the behest of the cartoonist and the uh, operator of uh, computer technology. He's doing that 
and uh, having a whale of a time doing it. This is me, this is not me. I'm doing this to charm you and amuse you, to remind you that you are not that aging body. You are much, much more. And let this <laughs> comedic representation remind you of how much more you actually are, even though you find yourself encased in the physical body. He's reminding me of uh, the, the information that I, I can now you know, give forth uh, of the many transformations and interestingly weird shapes that we find ourselves recalling from lucid dreams. The odd-looking people <laughs> in various astral planes that we find ourselves wandering through, wondering why and how we got there. And I personally know a number of people that have these experiences regularly and uh, put them up uh, on Facebook or whatever. And uh, they get it. <laughs> Although they, they still sort of wonder why. And uh, Timothy just would like to remind you of that. And I'm communicating a, a little thought to him about rediscovering the documentary film made, oh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, Return Engagement, documenting the speaking tour that he and G. Gordon Liddy did together. And uh, remi telling him, you know, I, I really enjoyed seeing that when it came out. I saw it at a film festival. And now snippets of it are up on YouTube, and it's quite amusing to uh, re-watch that. How is he feeling about his cultural contribution? Now that he's had plenty of quote-unquote time to look back on it. Uh... He's telling me he can see it in terms of psychological paradigms, the way he would think when he was uh, at Harvard. Was it Harvard? I think it was. Um, before he got turfed for, uh, what did he get turfed for? Giving mushrooms to graduate students or something like that. And um, before he became, you know, uh, turn on, tune in, drop out guy. And um, he sees a lot of his behavior in analyzing it in those terms, but that's just one aspect of his being. He also sees his life as a experiment in magic, white magic, where he played many roles and uh, understood the the advantages of flexibility and the uh, power of camouflage and uh, theatrical <laughs> expression. Okay, I get it. And um, he's, you know, comparing some of this to how he expressed himself, and in some cases herself, in uh, other lives. And uh, as he rummages through these uh, images and representations, um, he is rediscovering what he calls his total self. And um, 
I said, you must have had images of that, flashing imagery of that on various LSD trips. And he goes, oh, yes, of course. And um, But it, it's easier to contemplate it here in this world. And um, the insights and uh, of psychedelics are uh, more uh, easily available through one's uh, mental powers here in this world. Oh, he's still distorting himself in, in the funhouse mirrors of his imagination. He's not staying the same for more than a couple of seconds as he moves around and uh, remakes himself imaginatively. Yes, very nice, Timothy. Very, very nice. As you're uh, watching me imagining this or seeing it through my mind's eye, try it yourself. Just follow what I described and see what you see. I asked him if he's uh, aware of... Uh, political and cultural events and realities on the, this planet these days. And he says, yes, he checks in once in a while and sees the same old... <laughs> uh, I can't tell, is he saying circus show or horror show? And then he says, well, both. And... Uh, um, it's no worse than it was when he was alive. It was pretty crazy then. And um, it continues on its crazy path. And uh, he's uh, more accepting of it now than he was when he was alive. He always wanted to change it, make things better. And of course, he was the uh, prophet, uh, the evangelical prophet of LSD and other psychedelics. And he says, uh, I think he feels he's had success at that because look how popular they are now. Ayahuasca, DMT, mushrooms everywhere. He says, that has been accomplished and I'm very pleased to see it. Even if it's still illegal in half the world, people find ways to do it, as we all know. So the... Uh, multi-dimensional multi image reality of the psychedelic experience is uh, so available and accessible now it's not just for a uh, privileged few and he's very pleased to see that and uh, what's he saying now He's, he's more kind of a drop-in guy than a drop-out guy at this point. He wants people to, uh, if they can, or if they're interested in what he's got to say, to take the insights and uh, revelations of the psychedelic experience and apply them to their lives and careers and environments. Please do that, he says. And... Uh, help affect the next stage of growth. Okay, Timothy. A fine message, and I thank you for taking the time to drop by. And uh, I'm sure it was Mary that gave you the nudge. <laughs> anyway, so long, and thank you.